Today's video, we're going to show you a really high level gun bunch format or gun bunch money play. That's kind of a spin off of double pose. It's not exactly, we're going to be using double pose for this play breakdown, but it's not only out of double pose that you can kind of get the same concept to apply. And it's really not even the feature route that we're going to be going over. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the bunch offset in the Colts playbook. We're looking at double post. If you want to get my entire ebook on this, make sure you join the Patreon. The link's going to be in the description. It gets you access to everything, all of my offensive, defensive ebooks, everything for just $10. Now, one of the most popular adjustments that people like to do against Gun Bunch is typically they're going to put this guy on the left side into an outside third. They might put this guy on a purple, and then they're basically going to play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage on the right because the corner routes this year are not as effective at beating man coverage. So what you're going to see is, even though double post, one of the better plays in the game, this C route's not going to be open against that third. The only thing we're really going to have is that post. They're going to have to user it. And so it can kind of muddy this play art up. Another reason why that is such a really good adjustment is because of this play verticals. If I was to take this guy and put him on the outside third here, and then, you know, obviously I've got a user, the running back, but really in man coverage, the only route we can throw is this verticals crosser. But as you can see, he's running right into the outside third defender. So the setup we're going to be showing you today is kind of a variation of a, a Y cross concept that's going to be really good at, defe at defeating this outside third curl flat adjustment that is so popular. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to streak our slot wide receiver. We're going to put our tight end on a tight end apprentice crosser. Uh, I think tight end apprentice might be one of the most valuable abilities in the game. And Rob Gronkowski gets it for one AP. Obviously, if you have Hara Mastery, that solves all your problems. You can also honestly just spend the two AP on tight end apprentice because I think out of all the apprentices, it's the most valuable and most bang for your buck apprentice. All right. And then we're going to streak the outside bunch receiver. We're going to put the running back on an out route. And then last but not least, kind of up to you, you can leave this post in the middle or you can motion him out and I'll show you the difference between the two. The beauty of this passing concept is it's going to do a really good job of being able to attack man-to-man -man coverage. As you can see, the tight end apprentice crosser just does a really good job this year of being able to get consistent separation against man coverage. And what a lot of people like to do when they're defending bunch is they love to try to man up the tight end to take away things like the tight end wheel route. So now when we have a route that is going to be really effective at beating man coverage, it makes the tight end a much much bigger pain, in my opinion, to defend. Now, if you wanted to, you could certainly leave the running back on this little in route. I like to put him on an out route so that it gives us a really good high low to the left side of the screen. So uh, what you're going to see here is, again, even if he's manned up, even if they have a cover four, as you can see, we're able to complete this over and over and over again. So you might say, well, okay, well, how are they going to defend that route on the left-hand side of the screen? Well, one of the ways that is... It, they're going to try to defend it is they're going to try to basically run this adjustment sequence right here. The problem with this adjustment sequence is the curl flat defender is not going to be getting deep enough to defend the crosser. And then the other thing about this is this crosser is still going to be able to cook man coverage. So as you can see right here, actually the curl flat did kind of low key get pretty good depth. Most people are going to have that zone dropped at five yards. I guess the stock curl flat is going to be able to get over there. But the thing that you need to remember about a stock curl flat is this is where the running back out route becomes in handy. So let me explain that real quick. So you see here, if he drops back, I can just check down to the running back route and we can just get our take our take what the defense gives us kind of thing. What we're going to basically be walking them into having to do is they're going to first and foremost start by trying to double double Mabel this. And I do want to show why this is a very good play if they're trying to double Mabel you. If they're trying to double Mabel you this year, um, you know, it's really not a great way to defend bunch per se because there's so many things you can do to get over the top or underneath of these zone drops so and this is this is one of those things so this tight end apprentice crosser if you watch this he will get underneath that 30 yard zone drop and you can throw it kind of right in front of that defender especially if you have the set feet lead ability so really the only way they're going to be able to truly defend that tight end route is with a stock cloud flat or stock curl flat, which is going to mean they're not going to be able to set their zone drops, which is then going to open up other route combinations in this offense, like the C route, for example, um, or all kinds of different things that we could do. Okay. 
So let's talk about what happens if they do. What a lot of people like to do against this is they're going to end up using the tight end route. So if they decide they're going to use it the tight end route, just assume this is my user defender. This is where this play becomes amazing. What you're going to see here is if they decide the user the tight end route, your post route is going to have a is going to be able to be thrown in behind it, like right in that little window. Now, for spacing purposes you notice probably that sometimes if they get bumped, that tight end and that circle receiver can kind of get a little tight. So what we can do with this is just motion the circle receiver outside, and we're still going to get the same behavior where he's going to get underneath that zone drop. And as you can see, this is just going to space the field really, really well. And if they are running, let's say they're running like a cover two. A lot of people like to run cover two this year. A lot of people. Um, if they are running a cover two defense on this, what you're going to see here is this post route is just going to split it really well. So again, if you look here to the, the middle, you see there's just all this space in the middle to throw this post against any defense, cover four, cover three, cover, cover two. It really doesn't matter what adjustments they run. This post route is going to be able to beat it, right? It's why double post is the best play in the game. But now we pair the best post route in the game with a really good tight end apprentice crossing route that's going to be able to be consistent against man and zone and it's going to be able to take advantage of the of when your opponent is starting to put that outside uh, cornerback on a deep third because he's just never going to play the tight end crosser, as you can see there. And I forgot to put the solo wide receiver on a streak, so we'll show you that one more time. But I really like this combo. I think it's super, super underrated. Not A lot of people don't realize how good the tight end apprentice routes are. Uh, the tight end apprentice post, the tight end apprentice crosser are very good. The tight end apprentice corner is also really good this year. Um, so you have that. Now, if they do run man coverage every now and then, everything gets caged. That's kind of practice mode more so than it is. I mean, it will get kind of caged in uh, actual game mode, but most of the time you're going to have a lot open here. So make sure you're always checking to your running back as I get absolutely hummed at by Pacheco, the best A-gap blitzer in the game because he's so short and has good agility. But I really like this setup. I think this is one of the best ways to run it. And, you know, even if they have help in the middle of the field, you see right here, you know, if they're going to play you in man coverage, you can throw this over the top and get yourself a big play. So really like this route combination out of the gun bunch offset. It is the little tight end apprentice crosser with the double post post route. And then really from there, you can kind of do whatever you want. I really like to just create a complete left side flood so that we can attack all of the different areas that are available to us over here on the solo wide receiver side. Well, thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and hope it was helpful. This tight end Prince Crosser is really, really good this year. I'd really recommend it against a lot of different coverages, and it will help you be able to be a little bit more consistent at attacking the solo wide receiver side, which is so often left out. People just don't realize how open this left side is once you start to mix in things like this tight end apprentice crossing route combined with you know different things like a C route and all that stuff. So thanks for watching the video. To get my full ebook on this offense, join the Patreon. It's where you get access to all of my offensive and defensive ebooks. You can sign up by heading down to the description and clicking the link down below.